Hello, and welcome to our video blog. We proceed with data science. Earlier, we discussed NLP or natural language processing, and the focus of our today's discussion is uh, customer behavior in data science. I invited Elizaveta Kurila, a data scientist and a leading specialist in customer behavior technologies at IBA Group, to share her experience and ideas. And Mark Hillary, a writer and blogger on technology, uh, will help her share her ideas. And I'm handing over to Mark to introduce the questions. Thank you, Marina. Um, it's great to be here. And this is a subject uh, that I find really interesting, you know, because I've, I've used tools like Amazon for so many years, and they always seem to predict exactly what I want. Um, what, what I was going to ask you first was about um, data science companies. They often claim that they can predict how customers will behave. Um, how, how accurate are these claims? And, and does it work maybe just for specific uh, businesses, like, like uh, your mobile phone subscription, for example? Uh, hello, thanks for inviting me uh, to take part in this important video blog. Um, so returning to the question, um, actually predicting their consumer behavior is uh, one of the biggest challenges faced by marketers uh, all over the world. And today this task is even harder because uh, consumers are constantly being exposed to new technologies, uh, products and even you once. And um, of course, um, advertising campaigns have um, a very huge impact on the consumer behavior. But fortunately, uh, this is exactly where data science comes into play. And um, nowadays, uh, using data, uh, marketers with the help of data scientists can find uh, their answers to the question such as, what is our target audience? Or how effective is our advertising? And uh, a lot of other questions. And uh, the answers to these questions can help marketers efficiently predict consumer behavior, build marketing plans, and as a result, maximize company's ROI. And um, what is especially great, it uh, doesn't matter what the specifics of the business. Mm, that, that's interesting. I, I, I mean, what about um, uh, predicting behavior before the customer actually does something? So for example, like, uh, if I regularly buy food for my dog from Amazon, um, could Amazon possibly send me products before I've even ordered them because they predict that I need something? Uh, absolutely. And uh, these predictions are connected uh, with the personalized data. You know, recently personalization has become more and more popular in e-commerce. And for example, for a long time, marketing has used many different channels to contact customers. And these channels were not linked to a single system. But today, this approach uh, is replaced by omnichannel. Uh, omnichannel removes all boundaries between uh, marketing channels and creates a single integrated, uh, fully connected uh, system. And uh, thanks to these systems, um, Mm, it became very easy to collect and store data, and now marketers are fully informed about the customer's journey to purchase. And as a result, they can make uh, more customer-centric business decisions. So we, data scientists, can build a predictive model based on personalized historical data, and uh, this model will determine uh, what the customer needs at the right moment and uh, offer him or her to make purchase just for example with the identification and um, customer only needs to confirm the predicted order that's all mm -hmm. okay okay i mean how much data or insight do you need then to be able to build the the model you were just describing uh, i mean it seems like you must need a, a long history of, of behavioral data to be able to predict what somebody is going to do next mm. You know, it's common knowledge that uh, the more data you have, the more tasks you can solve. Um, and of course, the amount of data um, depends on goals. But in general, uh, data over a one year period is enough to get quite a good results. But it's worth remembering that the more historical data you have, uh, the more accurate their results. Uh, so if we talk about what data we need to make some predictions, 
So um, discounts, promotions, uh, advertisement budgets uh, can help uh, to uh, plan the best marketing tactics and, for example, the best uh, channel budget contributions. Um, tasks uh, directly related to predicting consumer behavior can be solved using uh, purchase data, products ratings, um, data on retail transactions, and so on. And uh, in this question, I uh, would like to talk about one of the problems uh, that marketers can face. Uh, it's a cold start. A cold start uh, is when a new client comes in and uh, there is no information about him at all. So to solve this task, we need to know or to predict some information about the new customer. It may be, for example, gender or custom location, and we need uh, to predict a base recommendation list. Uh, so, uh, you know, according to research, 68% of uh, new customers are not profitable at all. And um, this task uh, is very important and any improvement uh, in solving this task uh, is very valuable. And then, uh, I mean, if you go from a cold start, um, you can teach the system from real customer behavior. But can the system, the, uh, the algorithm, learn as well using machine learning? And, and if so, then how do you prevent bias or, or bad data getting into the system? I can say that uh, machine learning combined with um, historical data analysis and some experience can solve a really huge variety of problems. And uh, there are a lot of models uh, which we can use to solve for uh, different tasks. For example, classification model. A uh, classification model best suited for answering yes or no questions. For example, they may answer the question whether the client will leave. Uh, the next one is the clustering model. Um, this model can split all customers uh, into similar groups based on common features. For example, age, behavior, place of living, and so on. And as a result, segmentation allows to apply uh, marketing strategies not only for one customer, but for all group at once. And um, uh, it is significantly saves the company time and money. Uh, the next one is the predictive model. This model can estimate, for example, the number of uh, customers per week or, for instance, calculate the required amount of uh, stock in the warehouse. And if we talk about um, invalid data, so data filtering and outlier models uh, can help um, um, clean the data and uh, they're used for solve um, uh, some specific uh, tasks. So for example, uh, detecting anomalous data in transactions. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, it's really, it's really exciting, but I think that it also sounds very complex. You know, if I'm an executive working in marketing and thinking about, how does this practically work for my business? Um, what would you say? I mean, what, what are the sort of practical examples of solutions you can, you can offer? Uh, let's think uh, about what all companies want. All companies, regardless of their orientation, want to uh, first optimally plan their budget, second, uh, increase KPI performance, and third, uh, better understand their business. And um, these tasks are solved differently for each type of business. Um, for example, for a retailer, the um, typical questions uh, are, is this customer about to churn? Or for example, how much and what products uh, need to be delivered in the near future? Or which advertising channel can attract the desired segment of customers uh, to store? And many other questions. Um, then the loan provider is interested in questions such as, for example, will this loan be approved or is this applicant likely to be default? Uh, and in conclusion, I want to say that optimal budget planning for marketing tactics, customer retention, uh, the ability to work with uh, the client from start, uh, identification of uh, anomalies and trends are uh, the tasks that will help any business reach a new level. That's well, great, thanks. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Lizaveta. Now we can see that data science can do a lot for businesses and for customers maybe too. Thanks everyone for watching this video. 
If you are looking for more information on data science, please contact us and stay tuned to our video blogs.